No one who's a futurist is, is some kind of an oracle who was born with a dream that can anticipate the future. We actually cannot predict the future. Is strategic foresight like looking into a crystal ball? No, in fact. A uh, crystal ball implies that we can predict the future, and we can't. In fact, if anything, I prefer the metaphor of a crystal prism, one that sort of breaks the light into its multiple different facets. Foresight is a new version of something that humans have been doing for a long time, and that's thinking about the future. The future is novel, the future is full of disruptions and surprises that we never expected. Given what we know to be true today, what are the possible next order impacts. If we can start asking questions like why or what if right now, we won't have to ask the question, now what, in the future. I'm Amy Webb, Chief Executive Officer of the Future Today Institute. My name is Duncan Caspegs, and I'm the Counselor for Strategic Foresight at the OECD in Paris. My name is Peter Bishop. I'm the Founder and the Executive Director of Teach the Future. My name is Patrick Nowak. I'm Executive Director of Future, Foresight and Imagination at the Dubai Future Foundation. Strategic foresight is really a structured approach to exploring the future in order to inform decisions that we need to make in the present. It's a skill that will allow you to understand that there are a range of likely, possible, plausible options going forward. Once you've acquired those skills, you are much more competitive, you're much more innovative, and you're much more economically active. Foresight uses data, evidence, frameworks, models, not in order to make predictions, but to make preparations. The point of these is to help people explore plausible alternative futures, to help them contemplate what's happening in the present so that they can build towards the best possible future. One of the key elements of the work that we do is that we want to anticipate the kinds of decisions that need to be taken if we want to ensure that growth, prosperity and well-being are achieved for all. Now the definitions and, and how we understand, how we conceive of growth, prosperity and well-being will change over time. But if we take that as a North Star, then we'll be in a better position to understand what needs to be done and what kind of opportunities lie ahead in order to achieve that. We have two kinds of signals. Strong signals are those that are changing the future today. Trends like climate change, demographic growth, economic growth, the rise of technologies, those are very strong signals that are, are changing the future even as we speak and will change the future in the future uh, as we go forward. There are weak signals which could change the future, but they're not changing it right now. We th should pay attention to some of them just to get a sense that what we think the future is going to be could well be different. So we think of alternative futures, some of which could arise because of the weak signals that are going on today. Everyone on this planet makes decisions on a daily basis, and all of those decisions have an impact on everyone else on this planet. So the future is not yet written, and everyone has their own objectives, and their own objectives are going to be shaped by the way they've grown up, the way they've been influenced by previous generations. and so. It's a continuous negotiation. Our own vision of the present and the past is but one slice of the view. In our culture, when someone says, you're making an assumption, that sounds like a criticism. It sounds like, oh, we should just base every conclusion on just facts. That's impossible. You have to make an assumption. The question is, do we have the courage to say, I'm making this assumption? That's a good thing, because I'm about to learn something about myself, about the future, that it takes someone else. We always say strategic foresight is a participatory sport. Some of it you can do to deep reflection on your own, but really it's done best through conversation, through dialogue with others, with others who don't share your same perspectives. That's difficult to do. It's difficult to identify one's own biases, one's own assumptions. And I think uh, when practiced well, the tools of foresight really help us to, to make that leap in our imaginations and, uh, and, and see more broadly about what the future could bring. The challenge before us is really about transcending, breaking those boundaries and ensuring that we can imagine vastly different and improved realities. So I think that if we are to prepare for any kind of future, whether it throws opportunities or challenges at us, 
whatever comes, we will be much better prepared if we have the core competency of some foresight, of some anticipation skills, of some scenario thinking skills, and just some readiness to entertain thoughts about the future.